So I've been working around my shop, moving things around, and I thought I'd give you guys a little tip. This is my original DaVinci 1.0. It's the first 3D printer that I ever owned. I use this thing as a kind of like a mini factory. There's a print that I sell. It's a flag for a mailbox, and this thing just prints them over and over and over again. Now, it's still stock, but I do have a resetter, so I use external filament. But there's a trick to making these things work without connecting a computer. Let me show you what that is. The prints that I put on here are really simple prints. I want them to be ABS, so I want the enclosed chamber, and this prints ABS, and I don't need super complex, so this machine can handle it, and so can the slicer. So it works out really, really good. So what you have to do is just remove this back panel where the electronics are. There's two screws to remove, and I've had this off so many times I've lost one of the screws and it just pops off. There's just a little latch here to pop it off. And the upper part of the board here is the SD card. The older style, like this one is a 1.0, has a large SD card. The 1.0A, if it says 3D printer on the door, that's a 1.0A. It's got a smaller SD card in the center, but it works the same way. There might be a little bit of glue on it, and you gotta just break that loose. And then on this guy, I have to drill a hole or cut a hole in the side so I can access it. So I can push it out with a screwdriver and then a needle nose pliers I can grab the card. So I'll show you on this, this side here where I ground it out. It just makes it easier to get to. And then once I've got that SD card, now I can take it to my computer. And then on my computer there's three files on this disk. There's a sample 1.g code, sample 2.g code, and sample 3.g code. Those are the three sample files. So all I need to do now is drag in the file that I want that I sliced, it's a .3w file, onto the SD card. Then I get rid of the sample one and then rename that .3w file to sample1.g code. Now even though it's a 3w file, that's .g code, which is so ironic. They want .3w, but their sample files are g code and they have all the same header information. So it works. You just rename it .g code, and then once you've got that on the SD card, you just put it right back in place. Once the SD card is in place, you can put the cover back on, put it all back together, power it up, and then you just press the sample. You go through the menu to get to the sample, but the samples aren't called sample 1, sample 2, sample 3. They're listed as demo. Uh, you can see here on the screen uh, what they are. I just picked demo because that's the first one. That's sample one. So I tell it to print demo, and now it's going to print my print, not the sample that came with the printer. It's as easy as that. So I hope that helps you make use of a, an old DaVinci. It's a handy little trick, and like I said, you can have three different files on it. So I've got several DaVinci's, and I've got several different sets of three files, So and some overlap. So there's some that I need to print more of, so I can have two machines going at the same time, and then if I don't need as many, I'll print a different sample. So it turns out they're great little factory machines. Um, they're not the most reliable sometimes. The wiring needs to be fixed. But overall, I've made my DaVinci's pay for themselves. So I hope this was helpful. And if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of my other videos. And if you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon, just click on the logo there. And if you're not a subscriber, please click on my logo down here and subscribe. This is a bonus video. I normally do a video every Friday, so this is an extra, so if you don't subscribe, you won't even know it's there. So please subscribe. I'll see you next time.